Uh, my name's David, and um, I grew up in an atheistic family. I never heard that abortion was wrong. At 21 years old, I was cast in a Broadway show in New York, and I became a successful actor and performer. My girlfriend's IUD contraceptive failed, and she became pregnant. I thought I was responsible, and it was a responsible thing to do to help pay for the abortion. I read magazines in a waiting room, hoping to escape my responsibility. She came out of the operating room a changed person. Depression engulfed her. I dove into my career, and our relationship ended. I fathered a second child with another woman when a contraceptive bill paled, failed. Abortion again followed. You see, what I didn't understand is this. At the moment of conception, I was not a potential father. I truly was a father. I selfishly pursued my career instead of my responsibility. Soon after that, I developed bulimia and I fell to 115 pounds. My voice was hoarse and the doctor instructed me not to talk. But I was on the US national tour of cats. I kept singing and I injured my voice permanently. That's why I sound like this right now. At 24 years old, my singing career was over. I lost what I was trying to save with the abortion. I sacrificed my children on the altar of my ambition. Addiction came into my life as I tried to run from the pain and it drove me to my knees. I gave my life over to Jesus and eventually I became a Catholic in 1995. Thank God. My experience with Jesus led to a long period of celibacy and purification. My recovery from abortion began with taking responsibility with the gravity of what I did. I received counseling. I went on many retreats, including Rachel's Vineyard. I found much healing in the sacrament of confession. Young people, don't give up on confession. It's a fantastic sacrament that our parents had. Don't lose it in this generation, please. I found much healing in sharing my testimony. One morning during prayer, in my mind's eye, I was driving a car. And I tried to stop for a little girl, but the brake failed. Her face smashed against the windshield, and a voice said, David, this is your daughter. Then I saw Mother Mary holding her hand. But this time, my daughter was beautiful, with no injuries. And I said to Mother Mary, I said, can I talk to her? She said, yes, you can, David. I said, well, how will I know she's in heaven? Mary said, she's with me, isn't she? That day, I was reconciled to my daughter, Tina. On another occasion in prayer, I saw my son, Benson, uh, Benson playing a piano for a choir of angels in heaven, and, and we were reconciled that day. Eleven years ago, I met Kirsten, who's just over here in the front, and we didn't believe the lie of this world that we are supposed to have sex before marriage. We practiced chastity and we waited. And young people, you can do it. Mar we practiced chastity and six years ago, eight years ago, we were married. Three years ago, we received a tremendous gift. I'm looking at her right now. A miracle pregnancy with no medical intervention, a natural birth at this late stage in our lives. Our daughter is beautiful and healthy. God has given me another chance, a chance to make amends for my selfishness. 
I'm David. I love the unborn. And I am silent no more. <laughs>